Jared Nuts here. We're out at Formula Drift, New Jersey. Uh, I got posted some questions recently on a forum to ask what exactly the fans want to know about what it is that I do as a crew chief. So we're out here today and we're going to talk a little bit about our Achilles radial tires and exactly what it is I do to maintain and keep the tires working properly and keep them consistent for the driver, how we dial that grip in through the tire and what we monitor with the tires to set the car up and allow it to do everything we need it to do. The tires that we're using are, very, are special, you know, um, racing t compound tires. They're very, very sticky, and they deal with heat a lot differently than your common street radial. These tires have a lot of gum on them, and they have quite a bit of, you know, you can really, really peel the rubber right off of them. They're extremely soft. When you start making a soft compound tire, what happens is you start heat cycling that tire, and when you heat cycle it too much, it hardens. So keeping the tires soft is essential to keeping your grip good. More grip, more heat. Too much heat, less grip. So at some point there's a threshold to maintaining the tire to keep it where we need it to be successful in our program. So what I like to do is we start the weekend off, we get a good temperature reading, we get a good pressure, and we set it. We monitor how much it grows. We monitor how it wears. We make mechanical grip adjustments in the car to use more or less tire so that we can get two laps out of a tire. The hardest strategy in Formula Drift is actually getting two laps out of our tires. Especially with a stylist driver that loves to use a lot of wheel speed like Forrest, he can, if he's trying, he can burn a whole setup in one lap. So we have to be sure that, you know, his driving's dialed into that and that you know, he's conservative enough, basically, to get through the two laps, and then we have to set up the car properly to know that we are actually going to, you know, be able to use the tire for two laps, and we're not overheating it and uh, cooking the rubber to the point where it doesn't have a second run in it. Something that you always see me carrying around on grid is a tire pressure gauge, and I have a temperature gauge. I monitor the temperature of the track to tell me exactly how much heat's getting put into the tire, we know exactly what wheel speeds Forrest is putting into the gear in the drive line, so I know how fast the wheel is spinning, how much friction that creates. So I can monitor the pressure before and after a run to know exactly how much the tire is expanding and how much heat the tire is dealing with. As a general rule, less pressure equates to more grip. At some point, too low of a pressure equates to a debated tire and a disqualification. So we have to we have to focus on finding that happy medium and maintaining our tires throughout the series. when you're doing tandem the first run to the second run we can't touch the car so in that we have to know what it's going to do on that second run what the tire is going to look like for that second run and predict what we'll do is uh, during practice we'll check the tire when it's new after its first lap and then at the end of its second lap and we'll check pressure differentials and we'll check pre temperature differentials between the two and if we hit the right threshold then the second lap shouldn't be that, we shouldn't sacrifice too much on the second lap if we do it right. I know you'll see in certain situations too, if there's a, like a call or something like that, you'll see guys back up and, and, and burn them up one more time just to make sure that that tire temperature is ideal. But we are not allowed to put anything on board the car to monitor any of that stuff. It all has to be done, you know, handheld or, you know, by me personally, I have to personally put a temperature gauge on there. I can't run a temp probe in the tire or in the wheel. I can't run uh, a, a serrator valve that only limits one pressure. All those tricks are forbidden, and that's part of the game. So we have to regulate everything that we're doing without those devices. One thing that was mentioned is what Forrest does in the burnout box. That's a unique thing too. We will typically run the same fronts on the car for the entire event, which requires him to go out there and reheat the front tires before every run. Because the last thing you want to do is go into a bank like this in New Jersey and not have any steering. And you'll see from our tires that we've used and our fronts right now, they're covered in what we call marbles. Marbles are the tire debris and the dust that you see on the track. When these things are molten hot, everything he runs over will stick to the tire. We're gonna be in the burnout box before every single run and you see the car is doing all these weird maneuvers that you're not used to. The first thing they're gonna do is go in there and understeer the car and that's gonna knock all the dirt and marbles and start heating up the front tires. As they're doing that, they're gonna snap the car around and start warming up the rear tires. Now how much do you warm up the rear tires and how do you know when that's right? They have, they have a concentrated amount of laps or figures that they do and after five figures, 
This temperature occurs after three figures. This occurs. We need a tire to last two laps. So if we're over there burning out, we'll lose the back tires for the second run because we got them too hot in the burnout box. So it's important to monitor that, that we have optimal temperature in the rear and in the front. So we want to scrub the marbles off the front and we want to get the front tires hot so they bite. The tires work most efficiently at one particular temperature. And you're, you're constantly searching for that grip threshold and that temperature. too low of a pressure and we burn the sidewalls off the tires, we don't have any side bite left in the tire after one run, our second run is going to be significantly slower. So it's important to find the right temperature and pressure to hold the tire in its shape. We've been here long enough and we've been to these tracks enough that we know a pretty good basis on where to start and how to get the optimal grip out of the tire in the burnout box. We're very grateful to Achilles Radial for providing us with, with an amazing product, what I feel is the best tire on grid. And